All right, so it is finally time to start the Arduino BMS project. Now, this is something that I mentioned that I might do like six months ago, and I never got around to filming any of the process to building this, so we're gonna start here. This is kind of the introduction as to what I want to do with this project and why I'm making it. So first off, the sort of inspiration for this project was sparked by these two little boards. Now, I did kind of a review on these, more or less, where I just tested them, really, but uh, anyway, this board, was advertised as a 30 amp 3S lithium ion protection board. And I would say that it does a pretty good job as a protection board. And this other one was advertised as a BMS, though I would classify it as a protection board again. Now, what do I uh, classify the difference between a BMS and a protection board? Um, basically what these do is they will monitor the individual cell voltages and you hook up your main battery terminals across the board and then you hook up your power input and output. So you can charge and discharge through uh, one of these boards. And what this will do is it will monitor the individual cell voltages. And if one gets too high or too low, it will shut off the power input or power output. Now, there's nothing really wrong with that. The only issue is it doesn't actually do any kind of balance charging on the cells. So it will kind of alert you of a problem or it'll shut off if there is a problem, but it won't actually do anything about the problem. Now this one was advertised as a BMS and like I said, it does the exact same thing as the other one does. But in a previous video, I looked at how you can hack sort of balance charging onto one of these things. It does not work very well and it's not recommended, but it's kind of interesting and it's kind of possible. And I actually used part of this circuit here uh, in order to do that. So these are what I classify as protection boards, not uh, battery management systems. Now, you can probably buy boards that are this kind of form factor that actually do proper balance charging. I'm not discrediting that, I'm sure that you can find them. But even if you can find them, they're not going to be able to dissipate a whole lot of power. It's a very small board, there's not a whole lot of surface area on it. You might be able to balance charge your cells with like 100 milliamps of current or something like that. And on a big pack like mine, which is, well, mine's not really even that big, it's only like 18 amp hours or something like that. Uh, it's just gonna take forever to balance charge the cells if you can only push 100 milliamps uh, through the system. So something like that, maybe not ideal. Now this setup, I've got these big 5 ohm, well not that big, but relatively large 5 ohm, 5 watt resistors. And these are capable of pushing about 800 milliamps worth of balance current. And that's a little bit better at least. I could actually upgrade these resistors to uh, like 2.5 ohm, 10 watts or something like that if I wanted to. That'd give you, you know, a good amp and a half at least worth of balance current, which is quite a bit. And I am thinking about uh, just buying these. I Basically, this whole thing right now is just parts that I had laying around that I threw in here to attempt to get something to work. And it, it does kind of work at this point. I'll talk more about that later. So one thing about this project, or one, one of my plans with it, I should say, is to kind of split it off into two branches. One project is going to be a lithium ion balance charger, and one of them is going to be a lithium ion battery management system. Now they'll both be for my 3S packs because I've got 3S packs, that's what I use. Uh, the reason why I want to do two separate things, for one thing I would kind of want to replace my charger because uh, it's kind of uh, it's kind of annoying to use. It only outputs like three and a half amps to a 3S pack and it also it shuts off every hour and a half as a safety feature or whatever. And that's just kind of annoying because I have to reset it like four times in order to get my battery pack to charge fully and it takes like all day to charge that pack that I can drain in two hours. So I want something that can charge it at least a little bit fa faster. I want to be able to push at least five amps into it. And I want it to not have that annoying safety timeout or if it does have a safety timeout, have it like three hours instead of an hour and a half. Of course, I can set that however I want to because I'm going to design it and build it. So. Uh, anyhow, two separate projects. I want to do the charger first because I think the charger is going to be quite a bit easier. And the reason why I say that is because the charger, you don't have to worry about how much current the circuit takes when it's idle. 
Uh, like right now, this whole thing takes like 40 milliamps or something like that, which would, you know, if you just hooked it up to a battery and use it as a BMS, it would kill the battery before you ever actually use the battery. So with the charger, of course, it's gonna be plugged into the wall or it's gonna have some form of power coming into it. So it won't actually matter how much the standby current is, it's just going to be able to be replenished off the wall, essentially. Uh, so that and then with the BMS it's actually going to be a little well, well quite a bit harder probably to be able to get that current draw down to something a little bit more manageable and something that you could actually leave hooked up to a battery all the time and not worry about it now of course I want to implement more safety features into this too I want like overcurrent well for the proper BMS I want like overcurrent protection stuff like that uh, overcurrent protection might just be like a big fuse honestly I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna do it yet I'm not, uh, well, none of this is probably gonna be final. Uh, like I said, this is just stuff that I have laying around. Uh, so those are the two branches of the project. I did actually start working on this project quite a while ago, and I just never made a video of it. Now let me talk a little bit about what's on this breadboard here and what it does and how this uh, kind of came about and why I haven't really worked on this, this project too much. So the first thing I did with this really was set up the individual voltage sensing on the cells. So that's what these uh, sets of resistors here are for, they're just uh, voltage dividers. Uh, really simple, not incredibly accurate, but accurate enough. And one of the issues that I had was when I was reading the voltages out over the serial monitor, I was getting just way wrong values. And at one point I just kind of gave up. I pushed this to the side and I didn't touch it for quite some time until uh, a couple days ago, actually, I started messing with it again. And what I discovered was because of the way that I had it all wired, I wasn't getting a good enough ground back to the Arduino. And because of that, uh, my voltage readings were way low just because there was voltage drop in the ground cabling between the resistors and the Arduino. So I've more or less fixed that. It's still not perfect. Uh, I've kind of, I've gotten it as low as I can. I've gotten the voltage drop in this cabling as low as I can, and then I've just kind of adjusted for it in code in order to make it close enough. And of course, one of the other issues with the Arduino is that you're using the supply voltage for the voltage reference, and I've sort of at least attempted to take care of that. I've got a five volt regulator here and usually these, in my experience, these have been pretty stable. Uh, but that five volt regulator actually feeds into a Zener diode and that does, uh, it outputs like 2.33 volts usually with this uh, setup. And it's been fairly accurate since I did that. And it's working reasonably well at least. I want to get like a proper voltage reference instead of using a Zener diode though. Uh, something, what are they, like LTZ 1000s or something like that to that, uh, are they actually like real voltage references. But uh, so that will improve the uh, accuracy quite a bit. Um, of course it's also an Arduino, it's a 10 bit ADC and we're measuring 50 volts across 10 bits, which uh, doesn't equate to a whole heck of a lot of precision. I might actually change the resistor dividers as well to try to get a little bit more precision out of this thing. But as this is right now, uh, it works well enough. These are 10 to 1 uh, voltage dividers, by the way. So if you put 50 volts in, you'll get 5 volts out. Which uh, So the max you can measure with this is 50 volts because you can't go over 5 volts with the Arduino. But anyhow, up here, this is all the balance circuitry, which I actually used part of the circuitry when I was making the video uh, where I kind of hacked in balance charging to this board. But uh, essentially just MOSFETs and resistors. I think I mentioned I can push about 800 milliamps through these resistors for the balance current, so that's fairly reasonable. And also, none of this is really final. I might, this is it's all just parts that I had laying around. So I might actually make these resistors a lower value and make them, you know, be able to dissipate more power. Uh, but anyhow, all this stuff is just circuitry to drive the transistors. I'll probably buy like proper MOSFET drivers instead of just using bipolar junction transistors to do it. I mean, this works, but it's kind of, it's not really the right way to do it. It's not like we're switching these at a very, like really high frequency or anything like that. Speaking of switching at a really high frequency, um, one of the issues that I'm having with this is the fact that, you know, we have voltage drop on all the cabling and stuff here. So as soon as one of these resistors kicks on, the voltage drop kicks in and this circuitry will measure that as, you know, too high of a voltage. And then 
or too low of a voltage and it shuts off of a balance circuitry. And it just starts oscillating like that. And for whatever reason, it will continue to oscillate even if the battery voltage or the cell voltages come back down below a reasonable value uh, and don't come back up. So that's one of the issues that I'm having. Probably just some weird quirk with the way that I'm measuring the voltages. I haven't really figured it out yet. It always seems like these projects that are really straightforward end up being the hardest because you end up with all kinds of little problems that you have to deal with. So this may actually end up being kind of a or a fairly long multi-part saga of trying to make this work and make it work well. So anyhow, I mean, part of that is probably that I don't have any kind of hysteresis on it or anything either. So it's just kind of oscillating and trying to regulate the voltage the best it can. And it actually does a fairly good job of regulating the voltage just the way that it sits. But uh, I will talk more about the circuit in part, uh, well, part two of the video where I actually uh, start kind of building and working on this thing. Like I said, this is just the introduction. So anyway, if you want to see me build this thing, hit that subscribe button. Like the video if you like the idea. Dislike it if you hate the idea. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm hopefully going to be a little bit more active on Twitter in 2018 if all goes to plan. And I'll probably put some different updates to this project on Twitter just as pictures and stuff like that. So the link for that is in the description. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions, concerns suggestions because one of the things I'm going to do with this is uh, upload the videos as I make this and hopefully people will be able to uh, kind of steer me in the right direction if uh, I can't figure something out. So anyway, I'll see you next time guys. Bye.